So we need to clear something up. Fasting is not the same as starvation. And yet when I tell people that I'm doing intermittent fasting, they suddenly say, oh, you're starving yourself? Isn't that unhealthy? Kind of drives me crazy, but it's just misinformation. So we're going to clear that up today. Hi, I'm Greg Whitmore, Tiny Mountain Wellness. Welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're new to the channel, I'm honored to have you here today. Please subscribe to my channel, hit that bell notification so I can help you improve your health and wellness. So besides defining starvation and fasting, we're also going to discuss the history of fasting. It has an amazing history. It's nothing new. It's just that it's been rediscovered. Now, we'll also talk about the benefits of intermittent fasting. I think you're going to love today's video. With that, let's jump right into my computer. So as I said in the introduction, I think you're really going to enjoy today's video. We're going to talk about the history and benefits of intermittent fasting. Recall in the last video, we talked about how fasting is not the F word. We talked about the standard American diet and how it just hasn't worked. The three meals a day. And we've even taught that it's better to have more smaller meals a day, maybe graze throughout the day. But that hasn't worked. The incidence of obesity, childhood obesity, and adult obesity, along with type 2 diabetes, has been on the rise. And we talked about common intermittent fasting schedules. Now today we're going to really simplify fasting and starvation. We're going to tell the difference and we're going to talk about the definitions of each. We're going to talk about the history of fasting. We're going to list the benefits of intermittent fasting. And we're also going to talk about side effects of intermittent fasting and who should not do intermittent fasting. So let's start with the definition of starvation. It is the involuntary abstention from eating. In other words, you don't choose to be without food. It's neither deliberate and it's certainly not controlled. On the other hand, fasting is voluntary. You choose to not eat for health, spiritual, or other reasons, and it is controlled. You control when your eating window is and when your fasting window is. And then intermittent is defined as occurring at irregular intervals. It's not continuous or steady. So intermittent fasting is irregular periods of voluntary abstention from eating. In other words, you choose the times when you eat, you choose the times when you fast, and you mix that up on a weekly basis. So let's delve into the history of fasting. And this goes back, it's kind of fascinating, but this goes back millions of years. Homo sapiens, when we became bipedal, standing up on two legs, five, six, seven million years ago. It's hard to fathom, but it was at that time that we started forming our eating patterns and our body started adapting into our DNA and, and the hormones, the enzymes, and how it reacted to food millions of years ago. In the Paleolithic times, two and a half million years ago, when we started uh, using tools, uh, they experienced feast and famine at that time. There were times when they had wild game. They had times when they could gather uh, plants and tubers to eat. And they had just as much or more times when they didn't have a food source. So, so they experienced feast and famine millions of years ago, and they didn't eat three meals a day necessarily. They didn't wake up knowing they were going to eat breakfast or get three meals a day. They feasted when they had an opportunity. When they had game or food in front of them, they feasted and they stored fat for times when they wouldn't have food or that famine. But there was no great wasting away from this fasting. They didn't experience any problems with mental clarity and energy didn't suffer. If that were the case, they wouldn't be able to go out and hunt and get food and Quite frankly, we'd be extinct if fasting was really that bad. Move forward to ancient cultures in the times of Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine. So you're talking about mm, 400 BC, somewhere in there. The father of modern medicine, he started realizing the healing properties of fasting. And he 
determined it was not harmful. The great philosophers, great Greek philosophers, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, all realized the benefits of fasting and how it brought mental clarity and, and greater concentration. In fact, the teachers would often demand that their students fast just for that mental clarity. They started beginning to fast for cleansing and purification and health reasons, so um, it wasn't new at all. Fasting has become the most time-honored widespread practice, and it's practiced by virtually every culture and religion that we know of. So fast forward just a few generations ago, your great-great-grandparents faced unpredictable food supplies as well. They had drought, war, disease, uh, their seasons, the winter time, limited their supplies, the wild game was not always abundant, and certainly this was involuntary and uncontrolled, and, and there's no doubt that maybe some of them died of starvation, but more likely they died of disease or exposure. And it was in the late 1960s when really the therapeutic fasting or fasting for health reasons started to fade out. Why was that? Because heart disease really became the major health concern and all the efforts of scientists were going in to solve the dilemma of why people were dying of heart disease. Some of the studies focused on dietary fat and fat and cholesterol quite honestly became the villain. And that's when they started talking about we needed to go high carb and low fat. And of course the food industry and the almighty dollar really influenced our diets and they're still doing it today. I'll have some future videos on how they influence what we eat and why fasting would not be good for the food industry. So fasting almost disappeared by the 1980s. Very few people were doing it for health reasons. They were still doing it for religious reasons, but therapeutic fasting really went away. But the bottom line is history tells us that fasting has been around forever and it's not bad. It's been around for thousands I would argue millions of years. It's not new, it's just being rediscovered and we need to spread the word. So let's move on to the benefits of intermittent fasting. When you talk about fasting periods, you usually talk in terms of cleanses and detox and purifications. That's how it used to be known and it still is. And the body is amazing at healing itself. It will detox, it will cleanse itself, it'll purify, It'll heal itself if we allow it to. Unfortunately, we don't allow it to. We're putting in food constantly, way too much, and some of those foods aren't healthy. Those processed foods contain toxins, and our DNA is just not designed to take care of those toxins. Some of the other benefits we'll talk about are ones that some I have experienced and some I haven't. So weight loss and, and lowered body fat. That's certainly something that I didn't intend to happen. It's not the reason I started intermittent fasting, but after only three months of doing intermittent fasting, I lost 32 pounds. And best thing about it is I'm keeping that weight off. Improved mental clarity and concentration. Certainly brain health is something I was really concerned about. And so intermittent fasting has shown to improve mental clarity. Decreased inflammation. I'll put a link to that video in the description below where I talk about how I had an autoimmune disease and by intermittent fasting, the symptoms of that autoimmune disease that were caused by inflammation disappeared. Intermittent fasting lowers blood sugar levels. It helps reduce insulin resistance and it will reverse type 2 diabetes. All three of those things are related. And so if any of you have type 2 diabetes or have been diagnosed with pre-diabetes, don't let them tell you that it's chronic and it's irreversible. Intermittent fasting certainly will help reverse that. One of the main reasons I started studying intermittent fasting was because I was so concerned with aging and I wanted to slow that down and reverse it if it's, if it's possible. That was the discussion with my physician that got me started looking into intermittent fasting. And how does that happen? Well, human growth hormone, which decreases as we get older, when we're intermittent fasting, it actually skyrockets. And especially if we can work out during those 
periods of fasting, human growth hormone would be produced in amazing amounts, and that helps slow down that aging process. Another thing that just fascinates me is the concept of autophagy. Autophagy is where there's some cellular repair that occurs. We have some used up worn cells that's still going throughout our body and the healthy cells will actually begin to eat those worn out cells and they become stronger in that process. And uh, so I'll put out some future videos and I'm continuing to do research on that, but the thought of autophagy and cellular repair is, is just fascinating. The other thing that's been shown in research to happen with intermittent fasting is there's actually changes that happen to our genes and it's the genes that are related to longevity and those genes that protect us from disease. So again, that's fascinating. It's nothing that I can prove that's happened with me, but research is indicating that intermittent fasting will allow that to happen. Some other things that it is shown is that it will help protect against Alzheimer's disease. Again, it's that brain health and that autophagy and that human growth hormone all working together to help us with Alzheimer's and dementia. And it's shown to prevent some cancer. There's research showing that cancer, that abnormal growth of cells, actually feeds off some of the toxins in our body and the carbohydrates. So intermittent fasting can prevent some of that cancer. Some things that I have experienced are increased energy. Even during my workouts, I have plenty of energy. I experience less stress and I sleep so much better when I've been doing some intermittent fasting. Some other ones that we got to talk about that kind of go unnoticed, but intermittent fasting is so simple. I started it easily, had no problem with it. It's free and it's convenient and it's flexible. It doesn't matter what's your work schedule, whether you're a college student, whether you work nights, whether you work days, whether you change shifts, it's really flexible and you can change your intermittent fasting schedule to meet whatever's convenient for you. And it works with any diet you may choose, whether it's Weight Watchers, whether you're paleo, whether you're vegan, whether you do a plant-based diet, doesn't matter. Intermittent fasting, remember, is not a diet. It's an eating plan, and so it doesn't feel restrictive. Yes, there's times when maybe you're doing a 24-hour fast or a 48-hour fast where you might feel some hunger pains and might feel a little restrictive, but you always know you're going to have food at the end of that fast. So it's not like diets, and that's why diets don't work, because they are restrictive. And while they may allow us to lose weight, Generally, because of that restrictive feeling, we regain it and we can't stay on some of those diets. But with benefits, there's always some side effects, so we have to list those as well. Hunger and cravings. Again, some of these I've experienced, some I haven't. We do get some uh, hunger, certainly in the first few times of intermittent fasting or fasting. But one thing to understand is hunger is caused by hormones. It's not just lack of willpower or something that we can't control. Our body produces the hormone ghrelin, which is the hunger hormone. And if we're used to eating breakfast every day, our body's going to produce ghrelin in the mornings. If we're used to eating three meals a day or more, our body's going to produce ghrelin and secrete ghrelin at those times. So with some time and some practice, changing of our habits, that ghrelin will not be produced and you'll find that hunger and those cravings actually decrease. Some people experience irritability and tiredness. Maybe that's that hangriness that people experience, but that again goes away once you start getting the hormones balanced and changed to meet your intermittent fasting schedule. I've not experienced these, but some people in doing intermittent fasting experience headaches, and I think that has to do with some dehydration or maybe uh, imbalance of electrolytes so it's important that we get the potassium and sodium and drink lots of water bloating and constipation are side effects that sometimes happen and certainly when our body and our gut is trying to heal itself you'll get some enzymes that build up and cause a little bloating and constipation you know if we don't get enough fiber which most of us on a regular diet 
don't get enough fiber. And certainly if we're fasting and maybe taking in fewer calories, constricting our eating window, we're not getting enough fiber. So we got to make sure as we're intermittent fasting, we pay attention to what we're eating and make sure we're eating high fiber foods, maybe vegetables and some fruits. And also if we need to take a, a fiber supplement. Some people experience a feeling of coldness. Research shows that that's just kind of our body that's sending energy, sending blood flow to the fat and to the visceral organs. And so our extremities feel a little bit cold. I've never experienced that, but um, there is uh, anecdotal evidence of that happening. Now, some other side effects we got to talk about. You're probably going to have to buy new clothes. You're going to lose weight if you're intermittent fasting. And so your old clothes just aren't going to fit. Unless you have some old clothes in your closet that you haven't been able to wear for a while, you're probably going to have to buy new clothes. You're also going to have to punch another hole in your belt. But I don't think too many of you are going to be too upset with those last two. So those are side effects. Let's talk about who should not use intermittent fasting. So those people that have a history of eating disorders, of course, anorexia nervosa, bulimia, those are disorders that people have that they really don't control their eating. And so if you put in intermittent fasting uh, and you have a history of eating disorders, it's probably not a good idea. People that are severely underweight probably shouldn't do any kind of calorie restriction or changing of their diet. Those that suffer from hypoglycemia, low blood sugar, or even hyperglycemia or high blood sugar. Anyone that maybe have a little trouble regulating their blood sugar needs to at least consult a doctor when they talk about intermittent fasting. Type 1 diabetics generally don't want to use intermittent fasting. Anyone that takes medications, whether it be for type 1 diabetes or any other condition, you need to consult your doctor before you start intermittent fasting. I will warn you that sometimes doctors don't really know the concept of intermittent fasting, so they will they may tell you it's not a good idea. But certainly, anytime we're prescribed medications, intermittent fasting could have an effect on that, so we need to consult our doctors. Women trying to conceive should not try intermittent fasting, and certainly those that are pregnant or they're breastfeeding should not do any kind of calorie restriction. And then children and teens. I don't teach intermittent fasting to my ninth grade health class. I talk to them about getting a balanced diet. They have developing organs and, and system, body systems. And so intermittent fasting probably isn't a great idea for them. Now, certainly teenagers that are obese or children that are obese, maybe they could benefit from intermittent fasting, but that would want to be done under the guidance of a doctor. So we've listed the benefits and the side effects and who should not do that, but I hope there's a light bulb going off. And I hope you at least realize that fasting is not the same as starvation, that we've experienced fasting for millions of years, and yet we've thrived. But don't just take my word for it. Do your own research. I'm going to list some resources in the, in the description below, but look into it. Do like I did and look into it yourself. I'm going to continue to study the research uh, because I'm like you. We're looking for the truth, and we've learned and we've been taught that fasting is not good for us and it's unhealthy. But research, if we delve into it, is showing that that's not the case. So... I gave intermittent fasting a try, and it's worked wonders for me. I hope you'll consider giving it a try as well. Now, in our next video, we're going to talk about how intermittent fasting works. We've talked about the benefits of it and the history of it, but we're going to talk about how it works and how you can get started. I'll talk a little bit about how I got started and I, how I think everyone should get started on that. That leads us to the question of the day. So we've listed about 2021 20, benefits of intermittent fasting is there anything on that list of benefits that piques your interest whether it be weight loss whether it be reduced inflammation mental clarity slowing down the aging process i bet there's one or more of those that piques your interest and hopefully will lead you into doing some more research looking into intermittent fasting discussing it with your doctor and maybe seeing if it fits into your life
So again, thanks for joining me today. I'll have a lot more information coming up on my channel and on my blog. But until then, we'll see you in the next video. If you haven't done so already, I hope you'll subscribe to our channel. And if you got some value, please give it a thumbs up and share it with someone you know that could benefit from this information. And hit that bell notification if you want to know when I put out another video. For more information, go over to my blog at tinymountainwellness.com.